Hello guys, today we're gonna talk about the Yashica T5. You talking to me? You talking to me? Yes, finally I have decided to grab my camera and talk to, directly to you uh, instead of putting some text on the video. But uh, please uh, let me know if you enjoy it or, or not and uh, I will take it into consideration. By the way, uh, I'm not very comfortable uh, talking to a camera and uh, my English is far from being perfect so in advance uh, sorry for all the mistakes I will make. The Yashica T5, also branded as the Yashica uh, T4 Super or Kyocera T Proof, are basically the same cameras. It was branded for different markets, the T5 for the European and Asian market and the T4 Super for the US market. Basically, uh, it's very simple camera built in plastic but it feels very robust and solid and it is not very heavy uh, it has a really beautiful lens uh, car says Tessa uh, 35mm 3.5 and it is fully automatic auto exposure and autofocus so basically it's a point and shoot camera in front you have the on off switch button right here and when you turn it on the plastic lens cover moves away and the lens pop up right here you have the super scope actually the camera has um, a west level viewfinder system instead of looking in the viewfinder you can compose the image looking through these windows right here right here you have the viewfinder and you may notice that the windows is right here but the viewfinder is here so it's not completely aligned so I think there is a prism system inside to get the image aligned. Right here you have the light sensor, here the flash and this little thing is the self timer LED. On the top you have the shutter release button. As I said right here is the waist level viewfinder, also called Soposcope. Right here you have the display panel, very simple, you have uh, the film counter and the taking mode picture. Right here you have the self timer, if you press 1 the countdown will start. So you have 10 seconds. As you may notice you don't have to press the shutter release button to take a self timer picture and if you press by error the button you just have to press once again to stop it on the left you have uh, the mod selector basically you have five five modes the first one when you turn the camera off and turn it on, the camera will set the mode at auto, which means that the flash will fire only if it is necessary. Then the second mode is the red eye reductions. Basically, when you take a picture, the flash will fire twice. Then the third mode is the forced flash which means at any time the flash will, will fire, even it's, if it's a bright day. Then you have no flash mode. And finally the 
infinity mode which means that the lens will focus at infinity but you will never have uh, the flash with this mode actually also uh, good to know if you want to take a picture behind a window you will need this mode In the back of the camera, it's very simple. You have the viewfinder windows and two LED, the red, sorry, the red and green one. When both of them uh, do not display, do not um, blink, sorry, it means that the camera is ready to take a picture. Right here. Then, when you take a picture with a flash, let's say uh, red eye reduction mode. The red one will blink, it means that the camera is charging the flash. Then when the green one blink, it means that the camera did not have time to focus properly. I'll try to demonstrate it. Right here, you see? So what you have to do is half press again and focus properly. Sometimes the red one will blink only when you are at infinity mode also called landscape mode or no flash mode. So when the red one blink it means that the camera warn you that it will choose a slow shutter speed. So the picture might be blurry. On the left side of the camera you have the battery compartment. To open it, you just need a coin like this. The camera takes this kind of battery. And here are the references. CR or DL123A batteries. What you have to know is, even if the camera is off, the film counter will still display, which means that it will consume a few amounts of battery non-stop. On the right side of the camera you have the camera back release knob. As you can see, it is very clean. By the way, uh, when you buy a compact camera you should check the shutter speed and mechanism. So. What you can do is take your phone and use the flash to check the shutter speed. So, in this case, it sounds good for me. The Yashi 5 has a DX code reader, which means that um, the camera will automatically um, set up the ISO for you, and it also means that you won't be able to push or pull a film by selecting manually the ISO on the camera. So now I will show you how to load a film on this camera. So it's very simple. You just have to put the film here. And place the film on the take-up spool. And then close it. So it will start to count until 1, which means that the camera is ready to take a picture. When you reach the last frame of the film, the camera will rewind automatically for you. So you don't have to press any button. But for example, if for any reason you have or you want to remove uh, the film, even if you haven't finished it, you can do it by using um, this little manual rewind button. You can't do it 
with your finger. But you can use uh, this little piece of plastic that came with the strap. Right here. To press the button. Let me focus. And here we go. So, why did I buy um, this camera? Actually, it was by accident. I was navigating on the net uh, and I found it for 30 euros. And I was aware of the current price for this camera. This camera cost between 200 to 500 US dollars, which is crazy. People are ready to spend this amount of money just for a fucking plastic camera which can die overnight you know don't trust electronic never never trust it i trust my really 35s for example another reason why i decided to buy this camera is because i really wanted to try a point and shoot camera basically um, being on the streets seeing an interesting um, subject or scene grab the camera and just point and shoot without even uh, looking through the viewfinder but basically uh, it's the concept of a point and shoot camera the fact that you don't have to pay attention to the settings and just focus on the moment or the subject and take the picture as fast as possible is what makes a point shoot interesting. So what do I think about this camera? As I said, it was my first time shooting with a point shoot uh, camera fully automatic and to be honest, I was very sceptic on the result that uh, this type of camera can give. You know, when you take a picture, you have no control. You don't know what shutter speed the camera will choose, you don't know what aperture, so it is very uh, difficult to imagine um, the picture and imagine also uh, how the depth of the field will look like. And I really enjoyed using uh, this camera because it permits me to experiment a different style of street photography. Basically, instead of uh, taking the picture using the viewfinder, I just uh, took some random picture, even without uh, composing uh, my image. Or I used the West Label uh, viewfinder. Basically, um, when I was very close to a subject, I uh, I pretended to uh, check uh, my settings on the camera or I did random thing just not to um, grab the attention of the subject and in reality uh, I could compose the image using uh, this little window right here so I was like this, like, and then I move. But even when I pointed my camera to someone's face, when I was close to them, uh, then they didn't even pay attention to me, uh, because I guess uh, they were thinking that 
I was taking something in picture behind them, or even if they noticed me, um, they even didn't care because uh, these little things look like toys, and um, it is not as intimidating as um, a solar can looks like, like my uh, Nikon F3. I shot this episode during two days uh, because I was busy and I could only shot uh, the wall at the end of the day. So when the sun went down, the light condition uh, was not uh, very pleasing. And I used this Neopan across 100 film uh, simply because I shot all my Trix and HP5 films. And um, this ones are the only one I had. Acros 100 is a slow speed a black and white film which means that you will need a certain amount of uh, light so it is not very suitable for indoor photography for example. From the result I see um, this film offer a very rich dynamic range and beautiful tones particularly on, on the black with uh, very deep black tones. The picture are pretty sharp uh, because this film is an 100 ISO as I said so the grain will will be very fine. So as you will see uh, some of my picture uh, came out uh, blurry. As I said the light condition was not uh, very ideal for uh, this type of film and um, this camera has uh, 3.5 lens which is not uh, very fast so slow speed film slow lens and bad uh, light condition are the perfect mixture for uh, blurry images and in some of my picture uh, the subject came out out of focus it is not the fourth um, camera but my fault because um, I did not uh, focus properly. Basically, um, to focus, you have in the middle of the viewfinder uh, a circle. Uh, this is the zone where uh, you have to half press to focus on the subject, and then you can recompose the image by uh, maintaining the half press button. But when I shot, as I said, I even didn't frame the image, so I couldn't uh, know exactly where the circle was when uh, I was moving like this. Sometimes I was too quick, it means that I didn't take time to focus, then recompose the image. Sometimes it is difficult to use this camera in certain conditions, for example, uh, when you are waiting for someone to cross the street, if you half press uh, the shutter button, the focus will be uh, far away. And uh, when the subject uh, is passing in front of you, um, since the camera has uh, focus on the background, your subject in the front ground will be out of focus. And sometimes your subject moves quickly, so even if you don't have press before, but at the moment when your subject is, is pacing in front of you, the camera uh, sometimes uh, are too slow to focus properly. So enough talking now, uh, I will let you watch the episode. Uh, I hope you will enjoy it as I enjoy uh, shooting it, even if uh, the result uh, came out not so well. Um, for the next episode, I will try in the context T2. So stay tuned and uh, let me know uh, what you thought about this episode. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.
C'est un micro, euh, papier, mon gars. Ok, arrête.
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Thank you, Fujifilm.